P-O-E, bitch. Blackout in five seconds. Yes, it is. Hmm. Black Light Podcast. Back with another one, you hear me? Yes, sir. Alan Christ. Big two time. Do the most lows. Yes, sir. You can follow me at Christ of Belly on Instagram. You can follow me at 4MG Big, I mean 4MG two times on IG. Come see me at Do the Most Lows on IG. Uh huh, uh huh. Yeah, Blackout Empire, always working. You know what I'm saying? So, first, before we get into all the questions. We think you should just first tell them about yourself, where you from, all that. No, just tell them a little bit about yourself. Fuck all that. Before we start this off, welcome home, my big motherfucking cousin. Oh, yeah, that too. Good to be home, man. Yeah, no more gotta say free loads no more on no song. You did that. Man, I'm warm welcome too. Man, niggas been saying that for a long time. Hey, welcome home, party coming soon. Hey, uh, follow us at on Instagram at Blackout Empire. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, DM us. Let us know. You know what I'm saying? You interested in coming through for the welcome home party below? We're gonna get it popping. Yes, sir. That sound right, right there. My bad, my bad, bro. What you was saying, man? Nah, I say I that's... Know. Big two time, my bad. Oh, uh, no, nah, you good. You keep going. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, man, look. Again, we want to start this one off, man. We're going to... This, this episode is about Los Bonafide, do the most Los. You know... We just gonna we gonna talk about him. He he home now, back home with the family, back home with his kids, feeling good, looking good, you know. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, uh, man, t- tell the world, tell the world about yourself, who you with. You know, St. Louis born, California raised, Texas made. You feel me? I'd have been all around this bitch, just living, fucking up. Going through shit, getting in trouble. Now, I was some grown man shit trying to get to it. Working hard. Overstood, overstood. Hey man, I just want to say this. Y'all see what's popped up on the screen? Los Bonafide, Day in the Life, yeah. featuring myself, Alan Price. Go check that out right motherfucking now. Right now. Right motherfucking now. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? My first official song. Yeah, and how, how it feel, your first official song since you've been back? It felt good being in that yo, man. For real, I felt like I was at home. I gotta get back in that bitch. Yeah. Hey, man, we working. We working. That's all we, that's all we can tell the people. Let me, let me start off by asking you this. Where did your passion, music, or entertainment come from? Shit, just being in the household. And always, the radio always on. Records always spinning. CDs, tapes, all, all that shit. Just always listening to the newest shit, the latest shit. Mama throwing parties. Everybody singing along and shit, just having fun with it. Hey, shout out, shout out my big cousin Lori. Yeah. Mama Lori, Auntie Lori. Yes, so, you know, you know, with, uh, with mom spinning music, who did you gravitate more? Like, what, what, what inspired you? What motivates you as far as uh, music, like different, different artists? Shit, gangsta rap. You know, I, I grew up in the '90s. Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Easy E, damn, me then Tupac, Bone Thugs, 
know what I'm saying? That's the shit I grew up on, E-40. That's the shit I grew up on. Yeah. All legends. Yeah. Then on the other side, though, uh, Jay-Z, Nas, Wu-Tang, shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Busta Ron, all that shit, man. R&B too, but I never really just got too deep into the R&B till I got older. I ain't really like that shit. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. Already, man. So how, how, how old was you when you think you discovered your talent? Um, I mean, I've been playing with it, but just really the same feeling like I could rap, probably about feeling like I can I I can rap and niggas telling me, oh yeah, that's hard. I like that. I like that. Shit. About 18, 19 years old. So that's when you start taking it seriously? Nah, I never, I ain't even start taking it serious. I was still playing. But, you know, when I was in Cali, we used to do these cyphers and shit. And I go in that bitch playing. I really be playing, but niggas would tell me I had some. Oh, you good? You got some wordplay, this and that. But I never really, I ain't take it, I ain't start taking it serious until probably about two, three years ago. Okay, okay. What and was your first song? Oh, keep going. That, and that's only because I feel like that'll be my foot in the door because I know that a lot of niggas relate to music and rap music. You know what I'm saying? A lot of niggas, that shit will bring niggas together when a nigga could be beefing, but hear a Tupac song and both of them gonna feel it. Both of them gonna have some type of emotion towards it for whatever different reason. That's real. What was you saying though? What was your question? If you don't, if you don't mind, though, let me add to that. That's, that's a, uh, it's definitely a, uh, a relatory fact, you know what I'm saying? Even when we was, uh, our ancestors were slaves, you know, that's what kept us alive. Music. That music. That's how, that's how we, that's how we communicate. Yeah. Facts, true story. So what was the question? So what was the first song you ever recorded? Uh, <laughs> It was uh, like in 2009, I think. <laughs> I had made a little mixtape. Damn, what? Uh, let me see if I can remember that bitch. Man, I can't even remember that hoe. But that was the first time I just jumped in the studio and recorded was like 2009. Yeah, bro, that, that song that you got, that he, that old song that he had that you used to play, that you had put on one of the mixtapes. He talking about, uh, oh, I was freestyling on that bitch. Yeah, yeah he was freestyling. He, he was, uh, see, cuz was, uh, he was freestyling outside of a, a truck. Yeah, <laughs> I was outside on the block. On a, in the, you know what I'm saying, in the, in the zone. With the blue hoodie, with the baby blue hoodie on. I remember that shit. Yeah. On that bitch free sound. It was back when niggas. I ain't even got none of them videos no more, hey, cuz. Man, look, this is back when niggas had MySpace. Yeah. <laughs> man, look. That, that was 09. That was, that's when I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna start fucking with this rap shit. Because I was on his ass. Yeah. I was, was on a, his ass. You was legit then. <laughs> Uh, hey, I was a little nigga, I was on his ass though, cause I'm like, cuz this shit gon' yeah, this shit gonna take off and shit. Cuz was just I had I had freestyle for like 20, 30 minutes, strong. Yeah. That shit, cuz end up getting uh locked up. Yeah. Stop the <laughs> violence, man. Ain't no room for that shit. They they taking us away from our families for that shit, man. Yeah, bro. Say, look, hold on. So good, you know, getting locked up. That's the only product I had of them. Yeah. And I had about, uh. I like what you did with that chorus, too, when you took them bars. No, because you had, <coughs> you 
you had about three freestyles. Yeah. And I, I, I chopped up all them bitches. And I did I did a song to all them bitches, believe that. But a storm came through and it wiped off my hard drive. Damn. And, and like, I be telling niggas too. Back your shit up. Yeah, if any niggas is doing yo, like doing y'all music and shit, y'all got, and it's storming and shit, y'all got y'all shit on, please be careful. Because yeah. if like your electricity can go out, your power go out, that shit can wipe out all your memory. You feel me? Because your, your, your system ain't getting shut down properly. I really, in 2010, I kind of got discouraged, right? Cause I was fucking with these niggas in the studio and I'm talking about, I'm smashed. These niggas, I come through one day and these niggas didn't talk about all my shit somehow disappeared, huh? All they verses, everything, all the songs still there, but my, all my verses disappeared somehow. Yeah, that was on some fuck shit. Yeah, that was shit. I was smashing too, boy. I wish I could remember that, all that shit. Cause I I could still go back and record that shit. Yeah, but that nigga was uh that nigga was on the block, man. I I chopped that bitch up. I did about three songs. Two of them songs got fucked up. Two of them songs. Oh, it was inside this crate. And I got shit. I end up keeping that one. Drop that other one. The rest was history, man. Yes, sir. Um, uh, running back to to them days, man. Oh. Uh, you know, because you said you, you kind of just started taking it more so serious. Yeah. Who was, who was your motivation? You shit. Just the life I was living at the time. That's all I knew. Okay. And then I'm looking around, I'm listening to some of these songs and these niggas getting paid to do shows with these songs that I ain't even feeling like the shit the shit was trash to me. At the time, Dallas was doing nothing but dance songs and shit. Know what I'm saying? Yeah, Club songs. But they had that shit popping though. Stanky Leg, Frankie, all that type shit. Uh, hit that hoe. Rick, Ricky Bobby. Ricky Bobby, all that shit. But I really wasn't feeling none of that shit. To tell you the truth. Yeah. And that, that's, a, that's another thing, man. Uh, shout out to Dallas. They so underrated. Yeah, it's some heat out here. Matter of fact, hey man, my nigga Bryce Cyrus just came home. Hardest thing, I ain't gonna say in Dallas, I ain't gonna say in Texas. Man, this nigga's hard. Shout out to my name. Huh? What's his name? Bryce Cyrus. Like Bryce. Osiris, but Bryce Cyrus. Bryce Cyrus. Yo. We need you on this podcast, man. Go, Everybody go check him out. Don't spam this shit. Yeah, I'm gonna hit him up. I'm supposed to link with him this weekend. The niggas raw, bro. Yeah, it's, he it's, just got out. He ain't he been out about a week now. Man, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of raw talent out out there, man. Shit. Uh, shit. You know, I used to be on my nigga, Mr. Uh, Mr. Lucci. Mr. Lucci. Mr. Yeah. Lucci. Yeah. Yeah. Them niggas out there now. Yeah. RP Mo3, shout out to uh, Beezy. Yeah. Trap Boy. Bobby. Doing this thing too. Number one, number, number what's his name? Yeah, Beezy. Number one, number, number seven, what's his name? Oh, number seven. Number nah, it's seven. another nigga named Se- Seven God. There's another nigga named Seven God. Yeah. Hey, it's a nigga. That Trap Boy Freddy just did a song with, man. It was, it was hard. It's a young nigga, man. Dun, dun, I don't know him. Yeah. And I know, uh, I know, uh, what's my guy's name? Hot Boy West. Shit, he from Waco, though. Oh, Waco? Waco. Yo. He just signed with a Gucci. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he just signed with Wap. Okay. Yeah. But man, back, back to low, back to low, so shit. You talk about that system, how old was you when you first went in? Like just started going to jail and shit? 
Yeah. It's 16, 15, about 15, yeah. Uh, how long did you do when you first went in? My first time, like two weeks, two, three weeks, something like that. I probably, I would've went home before that, but you know, I was in that hell fucking up. Yeah. Then, then them stretches start getting longer, months, and they start hitting a nigga with years and shit. Yeah. I did my longest stretch when I was 19. I did a, a four piece. From uh 19 to 23, came home, stayed out about a year and a half. That's when I went in and did that like 10 and a half. Just came home out that bitch. Okay. Okay. So From 2010 to 2000 uh to shit just now 21. 21. So, let me ask you this. So for the young, for niggas out here, you know, you got young niggas, most niggas nowadays, they like to pick up a gun and weed before they pick up a basketball or something. That's the new trend, be a gangster now. Yeah. But niggas really don't be coming from that. But so I want to ask you what you got, what kind of advice you got for niggas that, that think they living like that, but really ain't living like that, but want to live like that. Because a lot of niggas want to be gangsters. Shit, it ain't no future in it, and it's always a choice. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, I always, you always got a choice. So, and then you think about the beef niggas be having, it usually be over nothing, something small. You know what I'm saying? So, shit, I'd say, bro, mash, mash for your dreams. Have you a vision? You know what I'm saying? Have you a vision what you really want to be, who you really are, and live that. Other than that shit, you gonna be lost in the sauce. You gonna be in last place in that bitch. Cause you going two places, <coughs> prison or to the graveyard. I know everybody done heard that a million times, but that shit true. Oh, it's good. That's real. That's real right there. So, 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 what's your new plan since you out? What's your new plan for your for your music? What, what you, what you wanna? What's your direction? What you wanna do with your music? What you trying to do? What's your goal? Shit, I really wanna get into management, but with the music, first of all, I just wanna record, man, and just make music because I like doing it. And whether even if only us three listen to that shit and hear it, then. That's cool with me, I ain't tripping. But I just want to record, I just want to get this shit out of my mind, out of my head, and onto the track. You know what I'm saying? And then, as far as like the business aspect, you know, management, uh, promoting, and shit like that, the whole 360. And like, as far as that, my motivation is the money. You know what I'm saying, period. Yes, I, that's what I want. The money. But also, be in a position to change lives and help people, because there's people out there with talent, but no direction. They don't know which way to go with they shit. You know what I'm saying? They don't know where to start. They just recording shit on their phone, or got shit like me, got shit in their head, and, and want to get it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's real. Like, I tell bro all the time, I don't care about Rap, like the rapping ass, but I don't care about being the face of that. I'm just trying to, I want to really just be a boss, really. I just run on my own shit and let some niggas that like, it's a lot of niggas that love to rap. I don't love to rap. I just do it because it's, it's an outlet to get rich and do other things. Like, so uh, I'm really on some Rocco. I just want to be Rocco. I want to let another nigga be future. If you want to have a face in the spotlight, you can have all that. I don't want that. I just want to sit back and make the money. Yeah. I'm uh, overstood, man. I just want to, you know, help, help the next person, next man, next woman. Feel they dream. Reach they go. Yeah. Exactly. You know, my, uh, my biggest, my biggest, one of my biggest dreams is to open up a Boys and Girls Club, which we do have, you know, we did start the black uh, team, team blackout, you know, boys basketball. We're going to bring that back. Okay. But just to sit back one day, 
40s, 50s, whatever, looking on TV or on my phone, whatever I have technology is, and I'm looking at a LeBron, Puff Daddy, uh, Usain Bolt, uh, what's, what's my what's old girl name? They fucked her, fucked her around with the Olympics. I can't even remember her name. Shout out to her, but you know, y'all get the picture and just be like, man, I, I helped, I helped mentor it there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like on some Snoop Dogg shit. Like how all them niggas in it, a lot of them niggas in the NFL, they used to play for him. And yeah. I know that. I know that brain. I know he'd be like, damn, that's what's up. Like they always come back and show him love. I like I raised this nigga. I I gave him his his opportunity. I showed him his dream. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, for real. And while we while we on that, we're gonna get back to uh Lowe's. I want to shout out uh, Shaq. That's one of my favorite entrepreneurs. Yeah. Because he helped out a lot of people. And that's Jordan. He probably that's the only person I think sold more than Jordan or just about Jordan shoes. Y'all can laugh about him selling that Walmart family dollar, all that shit. But hey, it's, he said uh, he said the reason why he did that is because shit, he uh, came out of practice one time or a game and uh, yeah, I think he had to deal with Reebok and, uh, you know, little, some, a fan, uh, some, a little, little boy mama just going up like, why, why the hell are you selling these shoes? You got them, you know, got them so, so goddamn high, you know what I'm saying? I can't even afford to buy them hoes. People like, yeah, I just can't even afford to buy these, you know, for my cheering, you know what I'm saying? So he was like, man, fuck the middle, man. I'm going to go get this shit done myself and sell them at a cheaper price because he came from that, you know what I'm saying? Stephon Marbury did a similar thing with them Starberry. Yes, sir. Niggas can laugh, joke around, whatever. Hey, as hey, long as you make that bank off of it, you can laugh all the way to the bank. Shit. Help right on. You know what I'm saying? That's no matter what, no, no matter how it is, you helping them financially. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? But shit, hey man, back to Los and uh. Since we own the youth, I wanna uh, I, I watch. I wanna I wanna give a shout out to uh, Million Dollars Worth the Game. They had a segment called Story from the Sales. I wanna kind of take that for a second, just to you know get the youth game. I'm sure they wouldn't mind. You know, and uh, what's what's one of the most fucked up things, scariest shit, or just shit that you know you was like, I gotta get the fuck up out of here. That you seen, you know, doing the bid, doing your bid. Uh, you know, just, just, just to, just to, just to, you know, kind of spook the youth. Like, this is not where you want to be at. First of all, COVID was scary as fuck in there. Scary as fuck. Niggas dying. You see a nigga one day, and the next day, everybody like, man, bro, died, such and such died. And niggas dying back to back to back, like that shit was scary because it's we couldn't fight it. You know what I'm saying? A nigga come at you whatever with a knife or hands or whatever, fam, or you can fight your way out there. It wasn't no fighting that COVID. Like it, it passed through and who it snatched, it snatched. And nobody knew who was next. But but before that, like okay, hurricanes and shit come through. I'm talking about no power, no water, niggas shitting in bags and, 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 and you know what I'm saying? Pissing in bottles and shit. And you ain't got nothing to eat, drink in that bitch because ain't shit, ain't no guards coming to work. And the ones that's there, they stuck there three, four, five days. They frustrated because they going through the same shit we going through. They just not locked in the cell. You know what I'm saying? So shit was crazy. No power. You can't contact your family. You don't know what the fuck going on. All you know is a storm that hit your city and you just hoping your family made it through that bitch. You know what I'm saying? So that shit's scary. Your mama getting sick, kids getting sick. You can't do nothing for them. You can't be there. That shit's scary. You know what I'm saying? Period. You hearing about your niggas on the streets dying. You can't do nothing about it. That shit's scary. That shit hurts. Y'all, y'all, y'all heard long days, long dark days, 
and cold ass nights, cold hard nights in that bitch, for real. Y'all heard from the Golden Mouth, man. Let me ask you this. What, uh, what kept you up and flowing? Getting through it. Because that's, that's pressure, bro. Reading, writing, writing um, family visits, phone calls, letters, pictures. I watch my kids grow up through pictures and visitation. Like, you see them, and then next time you see them, they... They big, you ain't even seeing your kid. You ain't see the growth spurt, you know what I'm saying? You ain't seeing their accomplishments. You ain't going to school plays, none of that shit. You just hoping you get some pictures of the shit, birthday parties and shit. But my kids, my family, that was my motivation for real. It kept me going. And you know, I got a strong spirit, strong, you know what I'm saying? Deep soul, but really reading, learning, educating myself. That shit got me through. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I wanna ask you a question. Nigga, I remember like, this is like, nigga was young. He was in that bitch doing some time. I had wrote you a poem. You still got that bitch? Nah, I don't think I got it no more, bro. I think that was back in, uh, that was back in like, 06, 07 or something. I, w- I had came home and went back in. Oh, okay. Yeah. You still got it? Hell no, nah, nigga, I gave it to you. <laughs> oh, you ain't make a copy of it? Hell <laughs> no, nah, nigga. Whatever I wrote, <laughs> I, I sent that shit. Yeah. Hey, cuz, can I ask you, Um, this ain't a serious question about jail. This is like more funnier question. Right here. You ever seen a nigga holding a nigga pocket on the yard? Nah, nah, nah. That's the TV <laughs> shit. That's the TV. <laughs> shit. All right, I just wanted. To, I just want. Nah, <laughs> got some strange shit in there, bro. That shit fucked up. That shit is fucked up. Yeah, you got some strange shit in there. Sure, I just want to make sure nobody went on no tea bag shit, like on no prison break. Nah, that shit. They don't be really out. They don't be out in the open with that shit. Nigga get his head bust. Where I would, right. they keep that shit in the cell. Yeah. Right. Shit, man. Back, back to the music, man. Shit. Uh. So how much shit you got wrote? Man, a, a whole lot of shit. A whole so lot. I you? write them in daily. You say you write daily. So you got it. Hell yeah. yeah. You got mixtape. You got mixtape in mind that you ready to drop, like mixtape, a uh, name and anything. Shit, the do the most lows tape. We'll call it that. The do the most lows tape, man. Coming um, soon. We finna market. When when you come drop it? Hey, put welcome back on that motherfucker. Man. Welcome back, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said. When you trying to drop? It? Shit, as soon as possible. I gotta record first though. That's the first bench. Nigga gotta record. You don't, you don't know you don't know any people down there that don't know studios? Yeah, I, I linked with some niggas uh this past weekend. I linked with some niggas, so I'ma see how that go. They nice too. Hey. Hey. The niggas that's, that's listening to this shit, man, and it's down there. Man, y'all hit us up, man. Get get my get my cuz up link down with y'all. So yeah. When it boils down though, if I had to, I'd get my own studio. I'm just taking care of priorities first. You know what I'm saying? I had to get on feet, car, crib, things like that. I had to get on, I gotta get on feet first, because I can't be crawling to the finish line. No, sir, that's real shit. Niggas need to hear that right there. <laughs> I always need to hear that. Responsibilities, you know what I'm saying? Some niggas gotta do what they gotta do as far as put their passion first, but right now I'm on some responsibility shit. I got kids and shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, shit show. Hey, man, look, since you've been out, you know, what's 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 your biggest experience that you done had? <laughs> The funnest I done had on some straight grown man shit, you know, 
when you and Karel came down here, y'all <laughs> niggas took a nigga to that strip club. <laughs> Shout out to Ka- Dallas Cabaret South, man. Nah, we had fun in that bitch, though. Yeah. Shout out, shout out to the D. Y'all know how to party. Yeah. Yes, sir. We'll be back. Yeah. We will be back soon. We had yeah. fun in that bitch. Then on some other shit, some family shit, just going to places with my kids. You know, me and my son went to the Nerf Wars. Uh, I took my kids to the Urban Air. We had so much fun, like just watching them have fun. Yeah, yo. Man, look. I ain't gonna lie, man. I told that nigga. I told that nigga. I'm like, bro, we gonna come down there. Shit, he thought we was playing shit. Nigga came down. I feel like goddamn kid again with my big cousin. Got <laughs> real drama. Say, we had fun, though. Even though it, it rained and a lot of shit didn't go as planned, we still made the best of that shit, man. Man, you fuck, nigga. You fuck nigga. If I had your Instagram, I'd put that shit on this bitch. You lucky I don't put this shit on this bitch. You fuck nigga. You, you that, that fucking video man, you fuck nigga. Hey, you from yeah. here. Man, you play me, dog. You fuck nigga. Hey, shout out my other nigga. You know, playing with you down there. More professional. Just did my boy Jack Joe shit. Tell Jack Joe down the wall. Me an ex son. Yeah, but see, we all know the game, though. It's part of the game. Sidetrack, setbacks, and shit. We just got to try to avoid that shit. We jumping over hurdles, man. We ain't letting nothing stop us. No obstacle too big, man. You know, we doing it. They going to hit you up at 1 o'clock in the morning here. Oh, yeah, I'm in St. Louis. Where you, where you at? I always say slow motion better than no motion, man. And shit. We moving forward. As long as we moving, it's a steady progress. You know what I'm saying? So let's just keep it push. Y'all see the, y'all see the consistency. Them same niggas gonna be calling. Them same, that same nigga gonna be calling. Let me do this. What's up? Let's do, let's link. Let's do this. Yeah, I'm. You still back there? I can't go back there and meet you. We good. Don't go that way. We good. Yeah. Now, y'all, y'all, y'all see what's popping on. Y'all see the consistency, man. Podcast yeah. at the podcast episode at the episode. You know? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Music at the music. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Let's go check that shit out. Right fucking now. You hear me? It's just a day in the life. Yes, sir. Blackout Empire. Alan Christ. You know? Big two times. Yeah, cuz you, you snapped on that motherfucker, Joe. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And then I ain't even, what was that, about 30 minutes in the studio? Yeah. Man, we ain't even talking because shit, man. Niggas trying to go to the strip club. Cool, trying to go to the strip club. Yeah. So, Shout out to Corel, man. My nigga Corel. We, we couldn't get it in like we wanted to, but. We had fun. You know what I'm saying? We definitely had fun. But say, but we gotta wrap it up, man. Shit. Okay. Empire shit. Allen Christ. Yo. Big two time. Do the most lows, man. Never do less. Black Life Podcast, you know, presented by Blackout Empire. You know, this is another one. And uh, shit. Stay high. Stay blessed. Yo. Keep that eye above open. And uh, stay focused. Stay focused, man. Follow one course until success. Focus. Just a day in the life. I ain't nothing nice. This just a day in the life. I ain't nothing nice. This just a day in the life. I ain't nothing nice. This just a day in the life. I've been waiting on this for a long time. Alan Christ and Los Bonafide. 
pretty lost for a decade. That's the only thing what's on my mind. One shit to do but grind. Now I lost three times a grind. Uh, money on the mind for the negative shit. Trying to live lavish, trying to get real.